Good morning, welcome to the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. If you're new here, I'm Kate, you're very welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, you're very welcome back. As you can see, I am starting today off in a very different location for the podcast. I'm actually on a little road trip and a little weekend away. And I thought I would take you along with me for the weekend and kind of mix the style up it's a bit of a vlog it's and hopefully over the weekend um in my airbnb i'll record a normal type of format podcast in the middle so it'll be a wee bit of both just for a wee change and to shake it up a bit um it's an absolutely glorious day here which is unusual and of course as soon as i start to talk to the camera all the traffic starts to go past but anyway, um, it's a glorious day. I'm really um, enjoying the drive so far. I'm only away from the house about 15 minutes. But, and I'm not going very far. I'm going up to the North Coast. Um, so it's about an hour's drive from here, but I'm hoping it's going to take me about three or four hours because I'm planning to stop and start and meander my way up and stop somewhere for lunch and just have a lovely time. I'm on my own until tomorrow so plenty of knitting time and then tomorrow Peter's going to join me and we'll come home on Sunday and just really looking forward to the time away and the knitting time just sitting and knitting and not having to think about anything else which is just going to be lovely but as I said I want to take you along with me and show you some of my journey up and some of the sights that I see. It's been a long, hard season. I'm feeling weary to my bones. I guess that's my. I pack my bags and now I'm gone Somewhere Between the sun and the deep blue sea Tend and red Flat out on a beach bed Working on my fishing skills stopped in at one of my favourite viewpoints along this road but I'd forgotten that we're at the start of the tourist season and it's really 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 busy. There are coach loads of people going along the road here. It is beautiful and I can understand why um, it is an area of an outstanding beauty and it is also the area that Game of Thrones was a lot of it was filmed in and there are a lot of coach loads of people going along that. just arrived and come in and I've stayed here before so I know the run of the place it's not very big it's a small um it's a working farm here and this would have been the stables and there's another um property up behind that is used for Airbnb and it would have been an outhouse at some point in the farm but they've converted the, the stables here and I will put a link to this um, property on in my information box if you're interested in coming it really is lovely and I'm not sponsored by Airbnb in any way but uh, it is 
a beautiful place to stay. And I thought I would show you around before I bring in the contents of my house to here because I think I have come back for a week. Good morning. Welcome to day two of my little mini retreat. There's a bright sun in my eyes, but uh, I'm out for my morning walk and it's absolutely stunning out here. Very calm. The sea looks very calm, which is unusual for this wee stretch. The birds are singing. Just a glorious morning. I'm out a little bit later than I'd planned, but it's still only eight o'clock. But I had such a comfy bed last night <laughs> that I really didn't want to get out too quickly this morning. It's the joy of a little break like this. The biggest decisions that you have to make are <laughs> do I get up yet or when will I make that cup of coffee? <laughs> so I can't complain at all. It's been lovely. Very, very restful. But as I said, I'm out for my walk. Um, to see if I can turn this round. There's a little stream here. I'll show you it in a second. <laughs> um, and I'm walking down to Kinbean Castle. So it's all lovely so far because it's all downhill. It could be a different story coming back. Just even on the walk this morning, one of the things that has really struck me is the quiet. It is so peaceful. There's no traffic noise at all in the background even. Actually, I, I could stand corrected. There is traffic noise. There's a boat going past. <laughs> one boat. Um, it is so peaceful. You can hear the water. There's a waterfall coming out of the cliff. I can hear it. There's not much else apart from bird song. This is definitely a beauty spot that is not particularly accessible. Um, 
I've come down about halfway and there's still quite a bit to go and these steps are steep. Um, it's going to be fun coming back up them again. the castle behind me what's left of it and it's definitely a scramble to get up here um, to be fair it is one of the few free places to access along here Carica Reed Rope Bridge Giants Causeway are all National Trust properties um, maintained by the National Trust uh, can be and is not and as I said it's, it's really quite inaccessible you need to be very mobile I'm going to have fun getting back up the hill there's a little bit of rock I could go to the top of here but I'm on my own the ground is slippy because there is there has been quite a hard frost last night it's beautiful now there was a hard frost so the grass and it's quite mucky and I really don't want to fall <laughs> so I'm going to settle myself here but I had considered bringing my knitting and sitting here knitting for a while and I didn't and I type of regret it kind of regret it but at the same time I'm actually quite happy to just sit here for a while and be it is so beautiful here at the moment it is warm it's a little breeze the birds are busy and uh, I have a rather stunning view. I can't really beat that. I am so excited. I have just come off the place where I was perching for 10 or 15 minutes, just soaking in the sun and enjoying the quiet. And I heard a splash and I thought, oh my goodness, there's, there's birds diving, there's whatever. And I happened to open my eyes because I'd been sitting with my eyes shut and there were dolphins in the bay and it turned out there must have been about 20, 20 or 25 of them. And they went right round the headland, cresting and diving. And it was one of those magical moments that made the walk and the steps and just been outside so worthwhile. I had really debated whether I wanted to come on the walk this morning. I am so glad I did. That is something 
I rarely, I've never seen before. And I think it just, it was beautiful. It was just the most beautiful sight. I did try and take a video of them. I was looking into the sun, so I have no idea what my footage is like. I'll insert it if I can use it. Otherwise you're just looking at the sea, um, which is no bad thing, but um, that was beautiful. But now I have to navigate these steps. I found the site for my house. I could live here. I'm back to the top. Excuse the heavy breathing. I counted the steps. There's 178. Obviously one way. But the glorious gorse at the top makes it all worthwhile. And for some reason, this plant smells of coconut. And because it's very close in to the path, the smell of coconut is glorious. So that's the worst, worst, hardest part done. And now it's just the walk, which will be slow back to the house. Time to talk some knitting. I've shown you lots of scenery and it's now time to get down to the nitty gritty. I brought, obviously for the weekend, I've brought some projects with me, but I also brought a couple of finished objects that I have had and which I've completed since the last time that I spoke to you. As part of the Lucky Dip Cal, and I'll put the hashtag for that uh, here on the screen, I have completed a pair of socks. For those who are new, the Lucky Dip Cal is a knit along, crochet along that we're having here that is has been running since the start of the year and will run through to the end of December. But you can join in at any point and it's basically to take the premise at the start was that we took 12 skeins of yarn, random single skeins that we might have in stash, uh, 100 grams each, and it can be any weight of yarn. It can be fingering weight, it can be uh, iron, it doesn't matter. And we put them into bags or put them into a basket and each month we randomly pull a skein of yarn from this little stash. And we create something with it and it's to use up all those random skeins we have either maybe a single skein that has been left from a project or in my case a lot of sock yarn where i've been on a trip and i've bought souvenir sock yarn and it hasn't been used whatever it doesn't really matter single skeins of yarn and the yarn that i drew for april was this and these are my finished socks. This is the Sarah Sanderson colorway from Legacy Fibre Arts. And what I loved about this skein of yarn when it came out, it was a micro sock set. I think that's what Sue calls them. They are 50 grams, a 50 grams skein of the main color, which is this one obviously, and then a mini of a contrast color. And that's brilliant for me because when I use a mini to do any form of contrast in socks, I rarely use 50 grams of the main colour. Very rarely. So this worked out very, very well for me. But what I did was just knit a mini. And I have some yarn left over and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it in a moment. But I just knit a pair of shorty socks. I did, I think about six rows of rib two by two to 64 stitch cast on. Then I knit, I think it was about 20 rows of just stocking stitch. They're plain vanilla socks. I put in my heel flap and gusset, which is my preferred heel and my rounded toe with the contrast color. And at this time of year, these are perfect under jeans in my uh, trainers or Converse or whatever. And I'm really, really pleased with these. I love the colorway. It's from their Hocus Pocus range. So I suppose they're an autumnal color. Um, 
as I said, it's Sarah Sanderson. And I have, I think, the other sisters yarn. So I'll knit those up come the autumn and have the set. But I'm really pleased with this. And I did have, um, I think I weighed it and I think I used 30 grams for this. So I think I have 20 grams left. I have put some of it into my magic ball for my stripes, granny stripe blanket, which hasn't actually grown. I have it with me, but I haven't done anything with it since I last showed it to you, which was at Vlogmas, I think. So I've put a little bit in it, but I'm also keeping the rest. Every month, Legacy Fiber Arts are releasing a mini skein set, a bundle of double knit yarn. And I think there's five or six minis in the bundle each month. And I've been collecting those. And what I'm going to do at Christmas is for vlog, uh, not for Vlogmas, for Advent. And you'll probably see it on Vlogmas. Um, I'm going to use those projects to start an advent. Though so I'll try that again. I'm going to use that yarn to create my advent project. <laughs> I'm so relaxed I can't speak. Probably be a blanket of some description. But what I'm going to do, because I have other leftovers of Legacy Fiber Arts, and most of them I have to say are fingering weight. But if I hold it double, I'll get a double knit weight. And I'll pop those into the blanket every so often as well and make it just a Legacy Fibre Arts blanket. Um, and I think that'll be really nice just to pop and use up all the colours because I'm trying this year, as you know from previous episodes, to use lots of leftover yarn I'm either making my hats or I'm getting them into other projects like my granny stripe blanket or any other blanket that I happen to be knitting. So this was my April knit along uh, entry and if I didn't say before I put the hashtag it's HCC Lucky Dip Cal so if you're putting your um pictures up on Instagram tag them you can also put your photographs into the group on the on the Ravelry page um, the Ravelry group it's just a chatter thread and finished objects as well and I'm now what is it about a week and a half left before I I draw the May um, package I can't believe how quickly the year is going through that we're already thinking of picking out the fifth colour for the Lucky Duck Cal. So that was the first thing I finished. And the second thing I finished is my Petite Knits, Petite Knit uh, Terrazzo slipover. I'll put the name at the bottom. And now it hasn't been blocked yet, so I've brought it with me to show you, but I haven't blocked it. And I love it. It's knit in Studio Donegal yarn. And I think I've pretty knit it pretty much to pattern. The neckline is a bit shorter than the neckline in the pattern and the neck it's, it is a turtleneck sweater, slipover, but it was quite a deep, it's meant to be twice this depth, quite a deep neck. And I'm not particularly tall, I'm not tall at all. <laughs> um, and I felt it would just be coming up too far. And I have to admit also, by the point I was doing the turtleneck, which was the last thing to do in the pattern, I was getting... Board. <laughs> but it was mainly because um, it was too high and I just did it half the depth and then folded it down and just to stop it from popping up at the back maybe because it is a bit shorter it has a tendency to I've just put a few stitches in and you can't see them to hold it down so 
you knit the body and then the pick up stitches for the ribbing around the sleeves, the armholes, and then it was the turtleneck. It's a split hem and I really like the detail of the ribbing. Uh, a lower back than front. And I think this will just be a really nice layering piece over jeans and wear a long sleeved t-shirt underneath. And once it's blocked and finished, I'll get photographs and pop them onto Instagram for anybody who wants to see them. But I'm really pleased with this. It was, it was a quick knit. As I said, I was getting a little bit, I think bored's the wrong word, but impatient for it to be finished, I think is, is the best phrase by the time I got to the neckline. But it is pretty much just round and round and round stocking stitch. And with no sleeves, it's an added bonus. I think I knit this on a 4.5, no, not a 4.5, a 5.5 millimeter needle. But it's just whatever you want for gauge. And I knit the second size, I think. The second or third. I wanted it quite loose. Which makes me think it was the third size. But anyway, this is... The finished object and I love the Donegal and on her pattern it looks quite floaty the yarn that she used she may have used merino I'm not sure and this is obviously a sturdier yarn but it still has drape and I think once Donegal yarn studio Donegal iron yarn once it's soaked and blocked really softens and the drape should be really really lovely in this and it'll be a nice for this time of year we are getting warmer but it's never overly warm here and it'll be a nice layering piece to wear now in the spring so that is my second finished object just needs blocked and it doesn't need a terrible amount of blocking i think it's more this bottom part just to make it sit a bit flatter So that's the Terrazzo Slipover by Petite Knit. And those are the finished objects. The things I am working on currently, I have two projects that I am really excited about and working on. And the first one uh, is a cardigan. I have had some yarn and stash uh, if you've been here for a while you know that for a period of time I worked in one of the big box craft stores here in the UK and just before I left I'd, I'd eyed this yarn for a while and it was a bit of a departure for me in the norm I am very much a, a natural fibres person I, I do use superwash but um, I love woolly wool and wool generally. But the colour of this particular yarn caught my eye as soon as it came into stock and I was packing it onto the shelves. So before I left, I purchased some of this and it's like a yarn baby. It's the Women's Institute uh, do a range of yarn for hobby craft. And it's their soft and smooth tweed iron weight. And for me, this is such a departure because this is 97% acrylic and 3% viscose. But I, and I've got three of these. Um, even though I no longer work there, they do three for two in the Women's Institute yarn. So I th think this entire, all this yarn came to about less than 20 pounds. So for me, this is a fabulous price point for yarn, particularly something that my intention for this project is that 
I have never quite found the right garment for home, like a house coat or a house, house garment. I have knit two sweaters, um, you know, the cooler mornings just to throw on over your pyjamas or if you're in the house. And the yarn I'd used in those was bulky yarn, so it bobbled and just got really pilly very, very quickly. And I couldn't throw it in the washing machine either. Whereas this will go in the washing machine. It'll be really versatile. And I just love it. The colour's gorgeous. It's a dusky pink with all the, the green tweed flecks through it. Uh, mustardy, um, yellow and that shade of green, kind of moss green. And I, I think it's beautiful. And the thing that really appealed to me was how soft this is. This is just the softest yarn. And I have to say, now that I've started to knit with it, it is a it is a pure pleasure to work with. I have to give it credit where it is due. So what I have decided to create with this yarn that I'm raving about is the Farmhouse Cardigan by Amy Christoffers, who is Savory Knitting. And I've knit some of her patterns before. I think the Felix cardigan is Amy Christoffers and sweater. I think I could be wrong. Um, and I've knit a cardigan and a sweater of, of those. But I love this pattern and my friend Holly um, in Ottawa has knit this cardigan. And I think I tried hers on and I loved the pattern. So I decided to put it on because it's uh, put it on the needles and I am making the I'm definitely making the third size and in, in this there's quite a lot of ease written into the pattern and I'm adding more because I really want this to be um, a really comfortable cardigan and if you've been here before you know I don't swatch <laughs> which I know is very wrong and probably a little bit mad and that I could really make a mess of whatever I'm, I could have knit something and it doesn't fit. But what is delightful about this pattern is the first thing it gets you to do, because there are pockets in this cardigan, the first thing it gets you to do is knit the lining for the pockets. And the lining for the pockets is four inch square. So they are gauge swatches. <laughs> and I have my two linings done. And what I did find that was that I wasn't getting gauge on the recommended needle, which is a 5.5 millimeter needle. And I dropped down to the five millimeter needle and I got gauge. Who am I? So I have my gauge swatches done, which is my linings. And those are set aside for later. And the other thing that I really love about this pattern is that it the next thing it gets you to do are the sleeves and sleeve island is definitely a thing for me when I've got through the huge project and then I'm sleeves to knit it can be a, it can put me off so the fact that this starts with the sleeves means then that the fun bit of the cardigan once I've it done I'm done and they're knitting up so quickly because this is in the skein it doesn't look particularly thick, but it is knitting up and it is just plumping up. And this, I'm, I am very, genuinely very, very excited about this project. Probably one of the projects I've been most excited about recently. And I'm working on the first sleeve. And I just think it is knitting up so, so beautifully. So I'm marking out, I started the increases here. And I, I don't often pin them out or put my markers in, but just for ease this time I am so that I can remember and I'm not having to try and find the increase row to count to the next um, row. So I'm marking them off. So that's a little tip if you find it hard, particularly if you're using a, a yarn 
This one's quite easy to see where the increase is, but some yarns it's harder to see where you've increased. And if you put one of these in, it means you've, you can count just from there for the next set. And I'm really pleased with it. And it is just coming up so prettily. And I love this colour. Dusky pink. Pink, I know, is a colour that suits me. And this particular shade of pink is just beautiful. So I'm really excited about that. I have, as I said, three of these. There's um, 600 metres in each of these. And I won't need the three for this project. I don't know if I'll go into the third. I may. But uh, if I don't, then what's left will go towards my hats. Um, if you saw, I think it was the last episode, I had produced a lot of hats that I've given to charity. And... I will do more of those with whatever's left over because again, because this is machine washable, it'll be perfect for for charity hats. So that is my, I was gonna say my most exciting project. It's my, it's my number one exciting project, but number two exciting project follows quite closely behind. And for it, I'm keeping it housed in my lovely basket. I have cast on the habitation throw. I've knit one of these before. I knit one, it was a pat, it's a pattern by Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade, and it was part of her knit vent series a few years ago. And when it originally came out, I knit this using mini skeins from an advent calendar. It's a perfect, perfect project for minis um, to use them up, just random ones. It doesn't have to be an advent calendar. But if you have mini skein sets, it's also a perfect project for that. But I have the deconstructed fades from the Narnia set that Shirley Bryan Yarns has. Um, and they are they come in sets where you have 250 gram skeins. Um, they're for, I suppose, predominantly socks. And I have knit socks using a different colorway from that um, range, the deconstructed fade. But I have all of the Narnia range from her and they kind of uh, cake up like this. I have different colours and they don't necessarily, they wouldn't necessarily be colours you would put together. But what I am doing is I'm holding it. My my one negative thing that I felt about the first habitation throw I knit was that it was quite fine because it is fingering. It's created for fingering with yarn, and it meant it was quite a small blanket. And I wanted something a bit cosier, and I'd seen that a few people, Selma of Little Big Knits, had done this with hers she held it together with mohair which isn't a surprise if you know Selma but I thought I like that idea so this time I'm holding it with this mohair and the mohair I'm using because mohair can really add to the price of a project is the drops kid silk and it's a much much better price point than Maybe some of the hand dyed mohair, which is beautiful, but in a blanket project, it is pricey. So this suits me better and I have started it. I'm on my first color, which again, so I am reaching down for it all the time. You can find it. Of course, I can't find it handy. Here we go. The first colour, and I'm this far down it. And just the, the mohair and it softens the colours, and I think then they will all blend in much better. 
and this is just a lovely rhythmic knit once you get in get the hang of it you just keep working up so it works from this corner it will widen out and once I've used the first 50 grams of each set then I'll start to go backwards and decrease with the other half of each set and already on even on just the first skein and as I say I'm only about halfway through it I have this much so it's going to be a much bigger blanket and for me a much cosier blanket and I'm really really enjoying just the simplicity of the knit for the habitation throw it was it's just nice to to sit and relax with it and there's a bit of interest with the eyelet rows and I have to make sure that I'm keeping the right amount of rows in between those but beyond that it's just knitting um not a great deal of thought needs to go into it it's just the rhythm and the the peace and calm that that can bring and that at the moment is really much appreciated so that is the knitting part and it's nice coming to you from somewhere different a bit unusual a bit discombobulated i'm not going to show you the granny stripe blanket now there's no point i haven't as i said done anything more with it but i'm hoping to work at it tomorrow morning um i'm not working on a pair of socks i don't have socks with me here so i'll maybe knit on tomorrow morning when i get up with my coffee and I'll show it to you then if I do work on it and let you see the bit of progress that I make tomorrow. But yeah, I'm off now to knit and over the next 24 hours, I will bring you on the rest of my, my weekend. Tomorrow, I hope to explore a little bit more. Peter's coming to join me this evening and I want to bring him down actually to Cambian Castle. Um, tomorrow as well but hopefully we'll do a little bit more of the coast and I'll bring you along for that and let you see what I'm up to but for now I'm off to make another cup of coffee and 